Well, my name is George Berkeley. I'm a local mortgage broker and small business owner. And we have some economic issues here in Elkhart County right now. We've been held hostage by the oil companies. And our county depends on manufacturing, especially in the RV industry. And we've seen the loss of over 3,000 jobs. Our unemployment rate right now is over 7%. In my business, in the mortgage business right now, we have seen all kinds of things happening. I have clients, I can't help get into homes that should be homeowners. I have people in bad loans that need to get out into those things. You know, They need affordable housing. We've been fortunate, Congressman Donnelly has worked very closely with us on that. But we need, we need help. And we need a plan that educates our kids growing up. They're the future. They're our legacy. Our people out here need help right now. Their people are scraping by just to just to make ends meet every month. So I'd like to hear a little more of what your plan is, and I hope you can uh, get a big old army of legislators like Congressman Donnelly there to help you out. Look, I've been campaigning now for almost two years. I mean, this has been a long race. There, there, there are babies who've been born and are now walking and talking <laughs> since I uh, started this race for the presidency. Uh, and you know, it, one of the great privileges of running for president, just like running for senator, as Evan knows, or running for congressman, as, as, as Congressman Donnelly knows, is that uh, you know you hear people. You, you get a sense of what uh, people's day-to-day -day lives are like. And what you realize is the American people, you know, they're resilient, they're proud, they're independent, but they are anxious right now because things don't feel like they're getting better for people. Uh, and I know they don't feel like that here in Elkhart. As I said, we've lost over 400,000 jobs since the beginning of this year. We lost 50,000 jobs last month. Uh, Wages and incomes were actually flat even when the economy was growing. So when the economy was doing better, people still weren't getting more money in their pockets. At the same time as costs were going up, so it was harder to save, harder to retire, which meant people were maxing out on their credit cards. They were taking out home equity loans to pay off bills. Heaven forbid they might get sick, in which case bankruptcies. We're skyrocketing, and then the housing market contracted, partly because the federal government did not oversee the, the lending process as effectively as it should have. We weren't cracking down on predatory lending. The subprime market got out of hand. And now, not only are we seeing more foreclosures than at any time since the Great Depression, but even people who actually have been paying their mortgages and have been very responsible. Home values have declined so much that some people have mortgages that are now higher than what the house is being valued for. So, so we've got huge challenges. Now, short term, here's what I, I think we have to do. I already mentioned, we need an additional stimulus package that provides some immediate relief to families to, to cope with these rising costs. We also need, I think, to start investing in some fast-track infrastructure work. We need to start rebuilding America, rebuilding our roads, rebuilding our schools, rebuilding sewer lines and bridges and water systems. And we could put people back to work right now who many may have been laid off of construction jobs, or other manufacturing work. And not only would that create immediate job growth, but it would also uh, spur on more economic activity for people who supply uh, contractors. You, know, some, uh, you need cement, you need steel, you, you need big machines. A and now suddenly that can help to kickstart the economy. So that's short term. Uh, long term though, there are a couple of steps that I've already spoken about, but I, I just want to reiterate. We've got to get a handle on energy. Understand this energy situation is not just a gas price problem. It is also an opportunity for us to create an entire new economic engine. 
If we're investing $15 billion a year in plug-in hybrid cars, suddenly cars are being made here in America that uh, will reopen factories that have been shuttered. Suddenly, it's steel plants, we can start reopening, building wind turbines or solar panels. All those, you know, Indiana's an uh, uh, agricultural state like my home state of Illinois next door. We could uh, invest in alternative energy and biofuels in a way that helps to spur on rural economies all across America, particularly in the Midwest. So we think we can create 5 million new jobs in the green energy sector. That's number one. Number two, investing in a long-term project of rebuild America should include things like, for example, for example high-speed rail. We're the only advanced nation in the world. We are, we are the only advanced nation in the world that does not have a serious high-speed rail system. All we've got is one along the Northeast Corridor. But imagine if we were connecting St. Louis, Indianapolis, Chicago, Detroit, Milwaukee, uh, you know, Dayton, Columbus. Look, th you, you think about it. Um, right now, airlines are cutting back on air service to smaller cities. As it is, all these places, on paper, it should be a 45-minute flight. But what happens? You got to drive there. That's half an hour. You get there, take off your shoes. You finally get to the terminal, that's another half hour. So if you spend an hour, your flight's delayed, so that's another couple hours. You're sitting on the tarmac, you fly over, that's 45 minutes. You, you drive to where you're supposed to be going. By the time this thing's all over, you spent four or five hours, and you're not even getting peanuts. <laughs> right? Why, why wouldn't we want to invest in high-speed rail? But, but that's just one example of the kinds of projects that we should be uh, investing in right now to make ourselves more competitive. Same thing with a, a, a new electricity grid. If we're going to have all these plug-in hybrid cars, then creating an electricity grid that is smart and energy efficient, because the one we have is broken down and wastes all kinds of energy, that is a huge project that could put people back to work and make us more competitive over the long term. So that is part of our strategy. Third, we've got to change our tax code. Don't give tax breaks to companies that ship jobs overseas. Roll back. Roll back, roll back the Bush tax cuts on the wealthiest Americans and give those tax breaks $1,000 per family to year, per year to middle class families and working families that really need some relief. I've talked about expanding the, the mortgage interest deduction so more people can take advantage of it. That'll save homeowners seven, eight hundred dollars potentially a year. Senior citizens who make $50,000 a year or less eliminate income taxes on their social security so that they've got a little more money that they can take home. All right, so, so infrastructure, investment, energy, uh, getting our health care system straight by uh, what I've proposed is a system where we're going to work with your employers to lower your premiums by up to $2,500 per family per year. If you don't have health care, you'll be able to buy into a plan similar to the plan I have as a member of Congress. And if, we, if you can't afford it, we will subsidize you for it. And we'll emphasize prevention so that instead of having people who are out there uh, going to the emergency room for treatable illnesses, they're getting regular checkups and regular screenings, all of which will reduce cost and improve people's well-being. And finally, and finally, an education agenda that says we are going to get serious about providing a world-class education to every young person. We're going to make college more affordable. 
We're going to invest more in science and basic research to ensure that we're an innovation economy. We're not going to be able to do all these things at once, but if we get started on each of these tracks now, then 20 years from now or 10 years from now, we can look back and we can say, we put America on the right track. We are investing in our future. And as a consequence, we are still the strongest economy in the world. That's the choice that we face in November. That's the choice we've got to make.